Hello and welcome to a new video about alternating current, AC. Today I want to talk about how we can mm, manage to calculate or to, 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 to work with uh, sinusoidal quantities you know, without having to take all this into account. Hey, this is a wave and this is a sinus. There's always this sinus. There's always this sinus in our, our equations and this is not that easy. Huh? I'm sure you know. So, actually, I really tried to, I really tried that these things are looking sign shaped right now. This red line shall be a sinusoidal quantity, a current, and the blue line shall be a voltage. Okay, this is why I named you and I. Again, I'm using the, the, uh, abbreviations which are usual here in Europe. Or at least in, 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 in Austria, where I'm coming from. So that's, that's U is a voltage here. Yeah. So, this is our sine wave. Yeah. And how to mathematically describe this sine wave? How, how we are describing this? Yeah. So we said I from T. Let's note this down. The first thing I know, I, I, I need to know is the amplitude. Alright. So the amplitude is here. This here. Here is the maximum value, so this is actually the amplitude of my swing. Huh? And we said for sin sinusoidal, sinusoidal quantities, there is a square root of 2 multiplied by, by, by the effective value, by the root mean square of this current. Huh? This factor square root of 2 is only valid for sine waves. Yeah? So square root of 2 multiplied by i and then we had our sine and we had said okay that's a omega d. Omega is the uh, angle of velocity multiplied by d. This gives some, some angle and then here we have an offset yeah? phi i. I have to add this off offset phi i. With this phi, I, I can shift my my swing to the left or to the right uh, to adapt a little bit to the timing. Huh? The, my timing and the form of, of my swing is looking exactly the same. All right, so that's that's describing our red line here. Huh? What's with the blue line, with the voltage line? Let's have a look at this as well. Yeah, u from t. This time it's square root of 2 multiplied by the effective value, by the root mean square. Here we have the amplitude here. Square root of 2 multiplied by the effective value. And then we have of course again a sinus, omega d. And this time it's a little bit earlier, this, this rotation. Here I have another another phase phase angle yeah, plus phi u, and here you now see I can describe both swings similar, very similar. I just have to adapt this phi i and this omega d. This omega is the like I said circular velocity, and uh, this is describing how fast the swing is. It's times 2 pi the frequency. Okay, so that's the forms. Yeah? This we already knew last video. Yeah? We just dis dis discussed this. So how to make this easier? Yeah? At first it does not look really easier, but here I have a circle diagram. Yeah? I have two axes, I call them ray and im real axis and imaginary axis. We could also call them X and Y. I will explain later why I call them Ray and Im, but it's for us just now it's two coordinates. Right? So it's two coordinates. And I if we at the, the the radius of these circles is by complete luck. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The the height or the, the amplitude of the swing. So the red circle has this uh, radius, the blue circle has this amplitude here. Yeah? And here we have a phi i of around, well this is minus 90 degree, of around 90, 45 degree. 
45 degree. So I draw now a so-called arrow. This is my current arrow. Yeah, this is my current arrow. And the length of this arrow is square root of 2 multiplied by the amplitude of my swing. Okay, and here I do have my face angle phi i. Uh, this is my phi i. So where's the swing now? What we are looking at is the projection. Is the projection of this arrow to the imaginary axis. Uh, so we are projecting this arrow here and we are looking at this length here. Let's calculate this length. This length here is the length of the arrow square root of 2 i multiplied by ooh, sine of this angle. This here, this value is exactly this value. At the time zero, this is i at the time zero. Here we have i at the time zero. Yeah? At the time zero, I have this value. Hmm? This value. And now I imagine the following. I imagine this arrow is rotating in this direction. with the angular velocity omega. Okay, and now let's have a look what is happening to this projection. Yeah? If, we, if we go up here, we'll grow, grow, grow until we are here, then we have the full. Then we are here. So we go up, go, grow, 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 and then we are here. Here we have the full length of the, of the angle, of the, of the arrow, projected to the imaginary axis. Yeah? And then we move further, and this will get smaller. This is here, this area. Then we are at this point, yeah? and we have no projection at all, it's zero. We are here, yeah? here, we are suddenly here. And then the projections get going to the negative side. Yeah? So what actually, what we see here, the swing, is described, is described by the projection of this rotating arrow, which will then grow, 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 positive, negative, positive, negative. And suddenly I have a sign-shaped, sign-shaped swing, huh? sine wave, described with one arrow. Huh? And why is this easier? Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. What is the... the, the arrow of this, of this, it's shorter, yeah? and it's a little bit further. So this is you. This is my arrow of you. Hmm? Different length. Yeah? Here I have a different angle. It's phi u. Okay? It's a bigger angle. Yeah? And if both arrows are moving with the same velocity, yeah, because this omega is equal, yeah, then they will stay put, yeah, but rotating with each other. And this indicates, all right, one swing is a little bit before the other swing, is maybe not that high because the arrow is shorter. And but it's all described with the single draw of an arrow. Here, I really tried, I really tried, and it did not manage. Look, here is a little bit low. Here's a little bit off also. Here this looks different than this. This is not nice. And I really tried this time to draw a nice sine wave. Yeah, so drawing sine waves is not easy. Drawing an arrow, I would say every technician is able to draw an arrow to sketch. There's no issue about this. So when drawing arrows, it's easy. Huh? Here in between, we also have the so-called phi, yeah, 
this is we have this phi have we have here yeah phi this is the angle between current and and voltage we call it phase yeah. it's phase phase angle you see it's rather easy and also adding two errors yeah we are experts in adding errors our forces in in, in mechanical engineering there are forces, we add forces with each other. The forces are also error. Two forces uh, added to each other is a newer, bigger or even smaller force if one error is compensating. It's the same here, it's the same here. We just have to add errors. But let's think, we are adding two errors to each other because two, two uh, currents are mixing yeah? and we are getting an error out. And this error is representing a sine wave. So actually we're mixing two sine waves and get a sine wave out and all just by adding errors. This is much easier than handling sine waves. Yeah? So this is a full representation of a sine wave, but with simple, simple. We need now, we are using, in, in, in mechanics, we also used X and Y coordinates. Yeah? Here we're using uh, imaginary numbers, okay, complex numbers, they consist of a real part and an imaginary part, right? but actually they are nothing more than two coordinates, yeah? the real part and the imaginary part, they have some benefits when it comes to multiplying and, 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 and stuff, so that we can calculate also powers, we will see, uh, but somehow we have to learn to deal with this, uh, these numbers, okay, these complex numbers. So this is what I'm going to explain in the next video. Next video we are talking about what is a complex number. Yeah? Right now we just draw errors, but next video we will draw, we'll say, okay, what is a complex number? And there's a real part, an imaginary part and, and stuff, and what are the rules to calculate with imaginary numbers or with complex numbers? Next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.